Thank you, Pastor Gerrit. Thank you, Pastor Lene, for this ministry, for the privilege that I have to be able to stand here and minister to you. Um, God mandated me to spend time with this ministry, and that's why I'm here again, because this ministry is part of the new, the fresh that God is bringing into this nation. And there's much change and much uh, uh, newness coming through this ministry to this nation. Uh, and a quick work from the Lord too. A very quick work, work from the Lord. So uh, God is um, he's raising up uh, people that are seeking His heart. Uh, and that are tapping into the rhythm of His heart. Something we need to take responsibility for today is to find God's rhythm, the rhythm of his heart. What's he carrying in his heart for this earth, for his people, for the people out there in the world? What is he wanting to release? How does he want to touch them? What transformation does he want to bring into their lives? You see, the word of God and the presence of God is not there to serve man's greed. It's there to transform us into his image and his likeness. That's the purpose of God's presence, and that's the purpose of God's word. And God is bringing strong shifts and strong changes. So my prayer today is that you will not hear my voice, and that you'll not see man, and that you'll not, you don't need to remember me when you walk out of here. What you'll remember is what Jesus spoke to you, and that you'll remember his heartbeat for you. Can forget about me. I'm only a conduit, an empty pipe. <laughs> but when he flows through me, that pipe is full of him. And so I trust that God will touch you today and you will experience the atmosphere of eternity during this holy moment and this holy time because Jesus is here and he's walking between the benches and he's there where you are and he's touching you right now. You see, some of you, the Lord has started things in your life, and things happened. And then you took that same thing and you went and buried it. And God says, now it's time to take off the dirt from that thing, and it needs to come out of the grave, because you are not functioning well without it. Now, things in people's lives that are not functioning well, and God's reaching out to those things. God is in resurrection mode. God is in, it can only be resurrected when it's dead. Your greatest miracle is, is clothed in grave clothes. And God is taking those grave clothes off people today. And God is breathing new life in so many areas and places in your life. You are changing and you will not recognize yourself. You are transforming and you will not recognize yourself. And so today I pray that as the Lord walks to you and touches you, and that's where the Lord meets you, right where you are, that you will experience His breath upon you, and you will experience the rhythm of His heart. When we study the book of the Gospels, we see how Jesus spent time with a family in the little town, the little village of Bethany. Two sisters, Martha and Mary, and a brother, Lazarus. And Jesus, the word says, spent much time with them, intimate time. He shared his heart with them. He shared heaven with them. What a privilege. Wow. <laughs> and the Bible says that he loved that family very much. The word was in their lounge. The word was in their kitchen. The word was in their garden. The word was in their house. And Jesus revealed the, the rhythm of his father's heart with that family. You see, it was a time of intimacy. I want to say to you today that the time of contraceptive Christianity is over. God is removing the dead out of his body. <laughs> God is removing the limitations, the infertility out of his body. 
And today we are seeing, and God is establishing a higher a higher sense of uh, sensitivity, heightened sense of sensitivity, fertility, and purity. The vessels the Lord is going to use mightily in this time and in this hour will be vessels that are walking holy before the Lord and that are walking in a high degree of purity. That will do it for one reason alone, is to make Him known. <laughs> and so Jesus is ministering in Jerusalem according to chapter, John chapter 11. And he receives news from Martha and Mary. Your brother that you love so much is sick. Lazarus is sick. You need to come and pray for him. He's seriously ill. Jesus receives this news, but he does not respond the way they expected him to respond. He lingers in the area of Jerusalem and continues to ministry, to, to minister. Gives room for much offense. <laughs> Doesn't respond to the family with whom he was so intimate with in the previous days, previous weeks, previous months, and maybe even previous year or two. And so Jesus continues to minister. Lazarus dies. After two days, Jesus tells his disciples, well, I think, it's now time to go. Let's go to Lazarus. He's asleep. Disciples think, well, if he's asleep, he's going to recover. Jesus says, tells them plainly, he's not asleep. He's dead. But I'm going to give you the opportunity to enter new ground of belief. I'm, going, I'm challenging you in this situation and everyone in my circle to upgrade themselves in my covenant with them. I want to say to you today that God is wanting to upgrade you in His covenant with you. It's a time where God is challenging. <laughs> we know God as our friend. We know God as our healer. We know God as our Father. But I want to say to you that God is taking a position today on the face of the earth as the commander-in-chief. God is giving instructions to his people and he's wanting them to respond. And so now, Jesus leaves the area of Jerusalem and he gets to Bethany and Martha and Mary receives the news that Jesus arrived. Martha, we know her as the busybody. She runs out to meet Jesus. The Bible says he was not in their home. He was away off their house. She runs out to Jesus and she cries out to him and says, Jesus, if you only were here, it's too late. But if you only were here, my brother would not have died. <laughs> if you only were here. And Jesus looks at her. And the Bible says he's angry. He's angry. I've spent so much time with you, Martha. You know my heart. I did not expect to meet you at this level of expectation. Not with my relationship with you. He's not angry about Lazarus that's died. That's nothing. <laughs> no problem. That's a small issue. <laughs> but you see, Martha, she's okay. She can run out to Jesus. 
to say, if you only were here, but look, you know, still with the attitude, I'm not offended, I'm, I'm a busy body, you know, I understand that you don't always have time to respond. <laughs> Mary is the other way around. She's the intimate one. <laughs> she stays at home. She doesn't even go out to meet Jesus. The one that sat at Jesus' feet and not, you know, serving him. She stays at home. She's a little bit, hey, listen, this is a setback for me. I have to work this out. Jesus, why didn't you respond? Why didn't you, you know, come when we called you? I mean, my brother would still be alive. Hello? And so Jesus answers Martha and says, if you believe in me, you will live even if you die. Where's Mary? Martha runs back home. She goes and tells Mary that Jesus is there. And she comes back. Mary joins her, goes to, to, to Jesus and says the same thing. If you only were here, I want to say to you today, There's things that has happened in your life and you were one and things went south where they had to go the other way around. And you are sitting here, why did God not respond? God is coming into your life uninvitedly today to turn things around. It's never too late with God. Doesn't matter what the situation is. It's never too late. Jesus came into that situation in measuring mode. God is in measuring mode with you today. He wants to see where, what's the capacity of your belief. Are you believing? Are you trusting? He's measuring things. He likes measuring things. That's the way he works. He told Moses, this is how the tabernacle should be built, exactly these dimensions. And then after that work has been done, Moses went and he inspected the work. And then the presence came. God is in measuring mode. He's measuring our lives. He's measuring our capacity. And if we are not the... The, the measurements that we should be, he says, okay, a bit of pressure. <clears throat> Who's experiencing pressure? Who's experiencing resistance? I am. I am. But it's all about what God is wanting to establish in your life and in my life and come through us as a conduit and touch people all around us. God is in measuring mode. Jesus was in measuring mode in Martha's life and in Mary's life, in that whole family. I spent time with you. I shared my heart with you. You sat in the space of wisdom. You sat in the space of the Word. You sat in the space of presence. You sat in the space of life. You sat in the space where nothing is impossible if you would believe so now something has hit your house what are you going to believe what are you going to believe how are you seeing things you sat in the space where nothing can bring destruction to your life if you don't let it what are you going to believe I shared my heart with you. You sat in my presence. Now the storm has hit. What are you going to believe? Who are you going to trust? So the storm hit the family. Now there's a problem. Lazarus has died. They think it's too late because they measured Jesus in a way in, the, in, in, in their position, not in what Jesus, what, not in, his, in Jesus' position. At their level of understanding, God is saying, I need you to go to another level of understanding of who I am. I need to upgrade you in the covenant. 
There's something about God when you walk with God, there's always something new. So now Jesus looks at Mary, <laughs> looks at Martha, and he hears the wailing. He hears the crying. He sees the sadness. And the Bible says he gets even more angry. Oh, my word. And then he asks them, where did you lay him? God is saying, where's your problem? What's not functioning well? And they take him to the grave, and he stands in front of the grave, and he says, okay, roll away the stone. And Martha says, God, no, Jesus, no, you can't do that. He's already been dead four days. There's an odor. And then Jesus looks at Martha and says, how many times must I repeat myself? Is that not very, <laughs> is that not very common? <laughs> how many times do we need to be encouraged? <laughs> how many times do we need to hear God saying something again? Huh? Now Jesus, and the, Jesus stood in front of that grave and he wept and the people misjudged the whole situation. Look how much he loved him. Listen, Jesus knew he was going to resurrect him before he left Jerusalem. His cry was because of the low level of expectation. <laughs> He's, this, he was crying because how could these people that I've spent so much time with have such a low level of expectation? I want to ask you today, where's your level of expectation? You see, something happens in our psyche, in our thinking, and I think the church was stuck there for too long, and that's why God is shaking everything today. We do, th we do things for God. We cannot do things for God. We can only do things in God. God has called us to abide in Him. God has never called us to work for Him. God has called us to work in Him. And that only happens through intimacy. That's why the church needs to pick up the heart of God. That's why God says, in Him we live and move and have our being. He doesn't say, for Him we live and move and have our being. So God is calling us into a, into a place of abiding in Him. Where did you lay Him? What have you put on the shelf? What have you allowed to, to cover what God has been dealing with you? What God has been sharing with you? What have you allowed to cloud the vision the dream that God has. I want to say to you today that God is resurrecting your dreams. God is showing them to you again. God is revealing them to you again. God is challenging you to believe in them again. And I want to say this to you. Aim for the stars, and then you'll hit the moon, but just aim high. <laughs> you may hit the moon, but aim high. Because God is in a mode where He wants to take the normal guy that will just believe <laughs> and show him a new ground that he's never experienced before and he's going to change your whole life. You need to raise your expectation. You need to raise your expectation. The stone was there. The economy may look bad. They just raised interest rates again. There's low shedding. There's corruption. <laughs> There's so many obstacles. It's thinking. And Jesus still says, roll away the stone. 
I want to speak over your life. Even if there's an owner, even if it's gone past the, the, the normal way of redemption, of resurrection, you, it's impossible for life to enter that situation. Jesus says, nothing is impossible for me. Raise your expectation. Jesus looks at Martha and says, didn't I say to you? If you would only believe, you will live even if you die. Lazarus, come out! I still don't know how he came out. He probably levitated. He was wrapped up from the feet to his head. He probably levitated out of the grave. And he came out. Take off. These bandages. And he lived again. I want to say to you that that only gets done when we understand the rhythm of God's heart. We are going to experience and see the greatest move of God this earth has ever seen. We're going to see people that will believe the impossible and see the impossible becoming possible. Yes, come on. We are going to witness the greatest harvest of souls coming to Jesus because the thickening of His presence has been released from the face of the earth. I want to say to you today that God is growing His people. He's not growing platforms. God is growing movements. God is not growing meetings. God is growing a strong move of God's Spirit on the face of this earth. Yes. There's a move that God has destined for this time and in this hour, and God is calling His people to respond. Churches that are engaging in what God's Spirit is doing will explode. But no one should try to put out the fire because it will be impossible. So today we need to understand the different kinds of anointings that is happening. You see, people, it's possible to move in, in the power of God but not know the heart of God. It's totally possible because God's gifts are irrevocable. When He's given you a mandate and you have followed God but you lose His heartbeat but you still minister but your agenda has changed, you can still have the anointing that flows but you don't know, you don't know the rhythm of God's heart. You see 1 Corinthians 2, 16 in the Amplified says, Who has known and understood the mind, the counsels and the purposes of the Lord so as to guide and instruct Him? And give him knowledge. But we have the mind of Christ. And do hold the thoughts, the feelings, and the purposes of his heart. In other words, God says you can be so one with me that you can feel what I feel. And there's something that's happening today in the people of God. Is they are starting to feel what God feels. They are not serving God mechanically. They are not serving God just because of precepts and all that, which are all good. But they are serving God because they feel God. And that's where God, God is revealing His emotions in such a heightened sense that it's changing people's lives. Just think when you prophesy over someone and you feel God's heart for that person even too. It's not what you only see, but you also feel. So God is the commander in chief. And He's wanting us to obey what He's sharing with us. God did not say, if you love me, you'll praise me. He did not say that if you love me, you'll worship me. He said, if you love me, you'll obey me. 
And God wants us to respond on the instructions He gives us. If you look at the Word of God in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, it's the New Living Translation, the 1996 translation. The New Living Translation doesn't, the New New Living Translation doesn't put it this way. It's the previous one. It says in Matthew 7, 21, not all people who sound religious are really godly. They may refer to me as Lord, but they will still, they will still, they still won't enter the kingdom of heaven. The decisive issue is whether they obey my Father in heaven. On judgment day, many will tell me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and performed many miracles in your name. Would you agree with me that if we could do this, if a person does this, they are anointed? Okay. So they've got the presence of God flowing in their lives. They are anointed. Okay. But then again, he says, but listen to the staggering truth that Jesus mentions here. He says in verse 23, but I will reply, I never knew you. Oh, my word. I just I prophesied in your name. I was part of your kingdom on earth. But now Jesus says, you don't qualify for the kingdom in heaven. My word. I don't want to be one of those. <laughs> it says, listen to this. I never knew you. Go away. The things you did were unauthorized. So you built churches. You prophesied over people. You used my gifts to advance your own cause. You served yourself. You had your own agenda. And God is confronting those things. So when we look at this, at this portion of Scripture, and there are many others, it's not only the world that needs saving. It's God's church that needs saving too in many ways. <laughs> needs saving. Needs to get to the heart of God. It's about relationship. It's about becoming one with God. It's about picking up His heartbeat. It's not about, God, thank you for my second house. And thank you. It's praise God. God wants to prosper us. I'm totally for that. If you were here yesterday, you would understand that I truly believe in prosperity. But prosperity is not there to serve your greeds. It's not there to, to buy yourself toys. It's there to buy yourself tools to expand the kingdom of God. It's all about seeking first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. So when we have those priorities in order, all limitations are broken, and God takes us on a different plane. Because our heart is right. And when we are a child of the king, we are not owners of anything, of anything but we are stewards of everything. It just changes things, eh? And so I want to say to you today, that I'm looking at people, all of you here, God wants to bless you so much financially, but what are you going to do with, that, with those finances? That's the big question. Are you going to obey Him when He tells you to do whatever you need to do with those finances? That's where the blessing is. That's where the strength is. That is what God is wanting from His people. He wants His heart. So if he owns your heart, he owns your money. Amen? Are you okay? Are you learning something? <laughs> so, abiding. It's not working for God, it's working in God. It's understanding his heart. God has called us to have a relationship with him in such a way that when we leave the, this earth, we'll continue with our dialogue in that sentence when we, see, we stand right in front of Him. It's not hard to hear God. You've been designed to hear God. You've been designed to, to experience God, to flow with God. You are created for His presence. You host the Holy Spirit. You are God's address on earth because you are the temple of God's Spirit. That makes you wonderfully supernatural. <laughs> You've got the solutions for problems. You are designed for specific 
sent for specific assignments and specific problems that God wants to solve through your life and my life. There are people here today, there are things that are not functioning. I got, I'm hearing this continually in my heart. Things that are not functioning well. Ma'am, what are you doing for a living? No, you here, you in front, yes. No, 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 the lady in front, yes. Sorry, the lady in front. Yeah. God is starting up your engines, that's what I'm seeing. There are things that were dormant in your life, you were flat to the ground, things went south. Stand up, please. Things went south. You literally lost life. You lost so much. You lost. Things were broken down in your life. Look at me. God is restoring everything. God is picking you up again. And the enemy has come against you. He's, uh, how many children do you have? Three? You're not married anymore? You, you are still married. Okay, because I see there's a problem there. Okay? And it looks very bad. Okay. I'm breathing life. God is breathing life over that situation now. Listen. And God is giving you favor. I see that you are condemning yourself. That you know we're not this or not that or whatever. God says it needs to stop now. God is working for your behalf. On your behalf. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Okay. And so God is restoring you. God is bringing back to you and more whatever the enemy has stolen. And God is touching your heart and he's healing your heart. God is starting you up and he's firing all your engines. All right. Now raise your hands to the Lord. There's, close your eyes. There's the presence of God coming upon you now. There it is. There it is. There it is. He's touching your heart. Just relax. Just say, thank you, Jesus. Oh. Even your children, everything. There's chaos. I see chaos. I come against the demons of chaos in your life. And I release abundance. I release prosperity. I release peace. I release God's favor upon you. And you shall walk and not become weary. And you shall rise up like the eagle. And you shall see things from God's eye view. In Jesus' name. Bless you. Are you okay? Amen. Praise God. Why are you guys so quiet this morning? Huh? <laughs> are you cold? You are receiving. So it's about abiding. 1 John 2, 27, the Amplified says, But as for you, the anointing, the sacred appointment, the unction which you received from him abides permanently in you. So then you have no need that anyone should instruct you. But just as his anointing teaches you concerning everything and is true and is no falsehood, so you must abide in, live in, never depart from him, being rooted in him, knit to him, just as his anointing has taught you to do. My word, that's a beautiful instruction. Listen, God talks about the abiding anointing. This is the time of the abiding anointing, like never before, <laughs> like never before. I want to say to you today, you have received an anointing, sir, that's on your life, that's unique for you, according to that scripture. It's the anointing for living. It's not a portion of God's presence. It's God himself. It's not a piece of God. It's God himself. And God says, if you stay rooted in me, if you abide in me, I'll teach you and show you how to go through life. Now, that anointing doesn't grow in meetings. It grows in the secret place. <laughs> it grows in your relationship with him. And that's why God says, do not neglect your time with me. Do not neglect your relationship with me. Because that anointing keeps you safe. 
My anointing, my presence in you makes you sensitive. It keeps you pure. It keeps you holy. It gives you the perspective of heaven in situations. The abiding anointing is the anointing you need to live on this earth. Without the abiding anointing, you'll be deceived. Without the abiding anointing, you can go astray. Without the abiding anointing, you will start serving your own agenda. Without the abiding anointing, you will start to become greedy. You will not be generous anymore. You will serve yourself. And that's why God gives us the instruction to stay in the abiding anointing. So we can, it's possible to start off in the, in the flesh, but in, it's, it's possible to start off in the spirit and end in the flesh. Galatians 3.3 3 says, How foolish can you be? After starting your new lives in the spirit, why are you now trying to become perfect by your own human effort? Oh, my word. I don't want to be there. I don't want to work for God. I want to work in God. <laughs> God is, is highlighting these things on the earth today in His body. Galatians 5.16, the Amplified says, But I say, walk and live habitually in the Holy Spirit, responsive. Listen to this. And, uh, to and controlled and guided by the Spirit. So if God says we need to do this, this is possible for us. Then you will certainly not gratify the cravings and desires of the flesh of human nature without God. <laughs> Amen. Okay, your time goes fast here. Eh? <laughs> Ephesians 3.20 says, Now all glory to God who is able through His mighty power at work where? Within us. Where is God working? It doesn't say they upon us. So God talks about the abiding anointing there. He says to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. So raise your expectation. God is going to do infinitely more in your life than you can ask or think. Raise your expectation. God is working in you. It's the abiding anointing. So 1 John 2, 27 and Ephesians 3, 20 talks about the abiding anointing in our lives. And then there's an, a, an empowering anointing. The empowering anointing is what God equips you with like this morning while I'm ministering to people. That anointing is there to transform you, not me. <laughs> okay? That comes on me when I minister and when I leave and I go home, it lifts. And we see one example in Acts 1.18, uh, Acts 1.8, New Living Translation. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes, where? Upon you. You will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere, ministry. In Jerusalem and throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So, where, where is God's attention now? God is aligning hearts. God is not aligning titles. I'm not going to stand before the Lord. Uh, I'm prophet, did he? Thank you for receiving me. <laughs> I'll come into heaven right now. <laughs> that's, not gonna, that's not the way it's going to work when I'm going to be standing before the Lord when I leave this earth. It's going to be a relationship. Hi, Dad! Hey! hey. Oh, it, was, it was such a good time spending with you on the earth. I had such a blast with you, Dad. It was amazing. It was just great. Thank you for loving me so much while I was on the earth. Thank you for guiding my steps. Thank you for the book you wrote about me. Thank you for Psalms 139 that you broke and opened for me, where I could understand that my whole life and every detail of my life was written in that book. 
and that you equip me with the abiding anointing and with your presence on this earth to fulfill the call you had for me on this planet. Oh, thank you, Father God. I live my 70, 80, 90, 100 years on earth. And God, it was such an awesome time. But thank you for the privilege I have to know you. What's my next assignment? What do you want me to do for you? That's relationship. It's not about, oh, I got so many songs. I prophesied over so many people. I was called a prophet. <laughs> I built so many buildings. That's not going, listen, if that's all part of the call, that's fine. That's 100%. Of course, it's there. It's how God equips the church. But that's not what's got eternal value. Eternal value is the souls of men and women. It's what God is wanting to do. He's wanting to transform us into His very image and His likeness. And if you bump into people and you don't leave a mark of the Holy Spirit in their lives, sure. Leave the mark of God's Spirit in people's lives. So the abiding anointing only grows in the secret place. That's where we experience His touch, where we hear His voice, where we get out of there and we turn from a lamb to a lion when we walk out of there. <laughs> Go and do what God has called you to do because nothing can stand in your way when you hear God. That's when you start moving onto new territory of believing. You can only stand firm. It's only when you stand firm in faith that God can keep you standing. Let that sink in. God can do nothing in your life without faith. You need to believe, and that's why God is stretching you to a high level of belief. So with the abiding anointing in our lives, you're not going to be deceived. Because that's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to deceive you. But with the empowering anointing and not the abiding anointing in your life, where God's Spirit will only come upon you, I'm talking about now if you minister, um, you can be deceived. <laughs> because God's gifts are irrevocable. You started off in the Spirit, but now you're ending up in the flesh and you're serving yourself. The miracles are still there. God says, you will recognize my people and know my people by the fruit, not by the miracles. By the fruit. And if God has made me an apple tree, I'm not struggling to produce apples. Okay? Not if I'm in the vine. Okay? I don't go, ooh, I must produce apples. Ooh. No. I'm just connected to him and I poop, poop, poop. Beautiful apples. <laughs> I don't work. I live in Him. Hello, I live in Him. I don't work in Him. I live in Him. I walk in Him. I abide in Him. So it's the abiding in Him time. God is protecting people today. God is saving His church today. We are wanting to save the world. God is saving His church. <laughs> because she needs saving. I need it. I need saving. Come on. There are things that has blinded me where God is removing today. There are things that has been holding us back and brought limitations upon us, and God says, I'm breaking it down. I'm taking them away. Okay, so the uh, inner anointing or the abiding anointing is for Christian living. The abiding anointing works in us. The empowering anointing works through us. The abiding anointing is for walking on the face of this earth. The empowering anointing is for working. That's when I minister. You minister. And God works. The abiding anointing is for revelation and manifestation. The empowering anointing is for demonstration. With the abiding anointing, the Lord manifests Himself in my spirit. He doesn't manifest within me so others will know Him. He manifests Himself within me that I might know Him. The empowering anointing is for demonstration that others might know it. So the abiding anointing is nothing else than the gift of eternal life. 
John chapter 17, verse 3. And this is eternal life. It means to know, to perceive, to recognize, to become acquainted with the only true and real God, and likewise to know Him, Jesus, as the Christ, the Messiah, whom you have sent. That's the abiding anointing, is to know Him. It's to wake up in Him in the morning. It's to go to sleep at night with Him, in Him. You hear what I'm saying? I don't know about you, but my first thoughts in the morning when I wake up is God. <laughs> and my last thought is, is He smiling on me? <laughs> Literally. <laughs> and if I don't feel the rays of His smile, I'm concerned. I get out of bed and I go and pray. <laughs> Literally. I'm talking about relationship here. Now quickly, and I'm going to be sharing, I'm going to be ministering to people. John 7 verse 38 says, Jesus speaks and he says, He who believes in me, as the scriptures have said, out of his heart will flow, what? Rivers of living water. That refers to multiple rivers, okay? So multiple anointings. It's multiple anointings that flows through our lives. And so God is revealing this on the face of the earth today. God is revealing this to His people. Why? Because He wants them to have understanding of how His Spirit works. It's a time where God is resurrecting things and taking things away. I want to say to you, God is at war with many things on this earth today. God is at war with mixtures, impurities. God is wanting His people to be pure and holy. Now, you... We are saved by grace, 100%. But you cannot walk on the face of this earth with the Lord and live an impure life. God is not, God does, God's a holy God. Holy. Holy. The benefits of the abiding anointing. I wrote this under the unction of the Holy Spirit. It's to experience a relationship with God within the four walls of His throne room. It's to have peace in your life. The peace of God. We will never feel abandoned, isolated, or inferior when we live in the abiding anointing. We will experience God confidence. Intertwinement with the Lord. Oneness is our portion. We will start flowing in the rhythms of His heart. We will transition from information to knowledge to revelation and then to the full-blown life of, and vibrancy within the Lord as we pick up His emotions, according to 1 Corinthians 2.16. We will experience supernatural guidance and insight into the affairs of life. Deception will be exposed who of you are experiencing a season where deception is being exposed? Things are being opened up all around you. Things that you thought were right is not right. Huh? Who's experiencing that? Am I the only one? Things have had a grip on, on you and, and God is saying, no, no, this was never me. I didn't, I didn't call you to function this way. And God's taking that deception out. You experiencing that? <laughs> Sin will have no hold on us. Fruit of the Spirit will flow effortlessly from our lives. We will experience His continual tangible presence wherever we find ourselves. Special personal moments with the Lord. The Lord will reveal secrets with us that nobody on earth knows about. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. We will experience our own personal vortex. I said this because I'm... <laughs> I'm sometimes just a bit crazy, but that's okay. I'm crazy in the Lord. We will experience, I know literally this happened to me in January. I was seated in my, in my study, in my secret place. I was just spending time with the Lord. And he, all of a sudden, I experienced this whirlwind, this vortex over me as the Spirit of God came down upon me. And it just, it took me up. And I was finding myself within this vortex, the raw, but raw power of God. Like raw. <laughs> I thought I was going to die. Okay? 
And I felt everything that was within me that was impure or unholy or anything that was contrary to what God's purpose is for my life was sucked out of me, <laughs> taken out of the walls of my skin and pushed against the walls of the vortex. And every demon that was close by was, <laughs> was just taken out. I'm not saying that I had demons. I'm just saying demons that was present was just pushed out. Everything was pushed out. These are the moments God wants us to experience. Some of you are looking at me saying, you crazy. <laughs> Look at Isaiah. Isaiah was in the throne room of God. And he said, I'm going to die. Ooh, what am I doing? I'm, I'm looking on God here. And he, the train of God's, uh, the, 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 God's train was, f the, the train of his robe was filling the throne room of, of the Lord. And it was all smoke. And the cherubims, every, the seraphims were, were all over the the, the throne room. My word. These are the experiences God is wanting us to experience, to have. God doesn't want you to get to heaven and say, oh, I'm blown out of my mind. You probably are. But you are seated in heavenly places with Christ today. Listen. Okay. I'm talking to myself. I say, yes, yeah, spiritual whirlwind where power of God will be evident even in the secret place. We will reveal His image and His likeness on earth today. Excuse me, sir, what's your name? Pietrus, ne? You're living in Pretoria? You've been here a long time? Grow, uh, birth, uh, born here? Okay. You've got your own businesses? Okay. How long have you known the Lord? Since you were 12 years old, you are very special to the Lord. You have got a uniqueness on you um, that really just, you've got a sensitivity to the Spirit of God. Now, the enemy has tried many times to dull that in your life. He's tried to, to put it off. He's tried to make you callous, put a skin over that. But he's never succeeded. Um, you've got a, a, a heart that draws to what God wants. It's just putting you. From a, sm from a young age, I see you even in your school years, you've always recognized what God wants. And you've got a purity in you that not many people carry. And you don't need to put a real effort into walking in that space. It's just something that you've always conserved and always took care of. And so even now, you've had great times in finances, but you had bad times in finances too. But now, as, as what I do see is God has, especially the last 14 months, 16 months, you can trace it back down yourself, but I see that God has been establishing a firm foundation in what you are doing with much more clarity, much more wisdom. You're putting bricks together. I'm talking now spiritually, and you are preparing yourself for things that are very, going to be very sustainable for the future. The Holy Spirit is telling me to tell you that what God is building now will succeed tremendously. You'll have great success and great fruit upon your life in the business world. But spiritually, where are you serving God? Okay? Okay. All right. How many children do you have? Three children. Okay. But the hand of God is upon your life, your marriage, everything. God is, I also see that God is really in your union, this tremendous favor. Uh, God's blessing is on, on your marriage. Um, of course, we've got all our, you know, challenges <laughs> in, in marriage. But the Lord's hand is upon you. What you're experiencing in terms of wealth is nothing in comparison for what you're going to experience in the next decade. God is raising you up. But, Praise the Lord. Yeah. But the Lord is going to instruct you where that money needs to flow. Mm, yes. Okay? So God's hand is upon you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Praise the Lord. God Hallelujah. Bless God bless you. Amen. Praise God. Mariska, can you help stand us a bit? The Lord has done a tremendous work in your life. Why are you on? Did you not even see me? The work that, has, that God has been doing in your life is nothing else than supernatural. I mean... Um, what I see, what I discern this morning when I look at you, it's a, a 
dynamic of the supernatural that you've never experienced in your life. It's totally a freshness in the spirit. It's like in the morning when you wake up, you hear the, the birds singing. That's what's happening in your spirit. Birds are singing. Other melodies are being brought forth in your life. Things are changing uh, rapidly in your life. I see literally how you took out a sledgehammer, literally, and you started knocking down walls um, in, your, in, your, in your life. I mean, you just started knocking down walls. Some of the walls that you are looking at, you are not feeling comfortable yet to knock them down, but you're pushing them out. <laughs> That's what I'm seeing. So you are creating more space for what God is wanting to do. And it's all done and orchestrated by the Spirit of God. Um, your life now, where you are at, is a very, um, um, if I could say, it's, it's like romance with the Lord. It's like you are trusting so much more. You are believing so much more than you've ever had. And that pleases the heart of the Lord. And because of that, the Lord has accelerated the things He's doing in your life. Now, what you are going to experience in 2022, even in 2023, 2024, the next three years, is going to be accelerated work of God's Spirit in your life. In terms of your business, in terms of your projects, in terms of your relationships, everything. But God says you need to, to, to protect the secret place because of what's coming. Uh, there's more responsibility that's coming your way that's going to draw on your attention. But never, never neglect the secret place. God is rebuilding your life. God is refashioning your life. Um, your things that has hit you in the past, and even the betrayal that you've experienced in the past, the neglect that you've experienced, the abuse, I also see abuse in the past. It's all becoming a very strong, distant memory. And it's dying. It's not part of anything of what you carry, what you are carrying for the future and now, even now. The work that the Lord is doing in your life is so precious. God is, is, is taking you and propelling you into the future He's always had for you. Satan wanted to suck everything out of you. He's not succeeded. And now it's God's time for you. Amen. And you're going to be free, completely free. And if there's something that, I, that highlights, the Lord highlights me, is um, where, there where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And he who the Son sets free is free indeed. I want to say to you today, if there's something you are experiencing, it's freedom on a greater scale every day and every month and every year. And you're going to just be the woman God called you to be. Amen. No more prisons, no more limitations, no more holding back, just running and experiencing the fresh breath of God in your life. That's your portion. Okay? God bless you. There's something you carry in your heart that you want to do it's like a replicate. I don't know, you are in, what are you doing? Uh, preschool. Preschool. But you're doing it well. And um, <laughs> you are, <laughs> don't question yourself. You are doing it well, but there's innovation in you that the Lord is, God is showing you new things, how to structure new. I don't want to say it's going to be a franchise, what you do, no. But there's definitely an outflow. Yes. of opportunities yes. from this model. I'm seeing an answer. It's like, no, no one's thought about this. Wow. Okay. Oh, my word. I can't think what you can do from a preschool, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> my mind's very busy, so uh, <laughs> I'm also trying to pinpoint it. There's lots of ideas, but yeah, my mind's like sometimes overtaking me. <laughs> yeah. It's I here. yeah, it's in my spirit. Though. I see God is forming something in your spirit that is going to cause opportunity for growth. And expansion. And you just can't get it together. Yeah, but God is working with you there. Yes. All right? I think it's in the... A bit, in the um, it's in the, the making. Yes. Yes. Incubation. You've got to birth it. Yes. Your whole lifestyle before the Lord is fertile. And God is going to birth it. Amen. Your relationship with the Lord is at another level. Amen. Just because you are seeking Him. Our greatest privilege we have in life is to be his son and his daughter. Mm. Our greatest honor is to be his son and his daughter. Mm. The Lord's protecting you. He's protecting you. 
And you know what? I see that not many, not all people agree with you. <laughs> because I'm it's... Also crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they're, they're like, what are you doing now? This is not you, they are saying to you. Mm. Doesn't matter. You're going yeah. on. God is yeah. showing you things. You, you've literally shocked some people around you. You've changed so much, you've shocked people. You do things that you would never have done in the past. Mm. I think I've broken down the upper wall first. <laughs> you broke out the upper wall first, yeah. You're rising up now. My word, it's so good to see what the Lord is doing in your life. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Just take the mic from her. I just want to release an anointing over her life. Just raise your hands before the Lord. Thank you, Father God, for your anointing upon her right now. In the name of Jesus, there is the anointing coming upon you. There it is. There it is. You're feeling it there. there, okay, there. Another wave coming now. God is just touching you. Thank you, Father God, for the revelation she needs, for what needs to be done in this next phase of her business in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you for that. There it is. There it is. In Jesus' name. You are feeling now your shoulders heating up and also your back. There's a mantle coming upon you right now in Jesus' name. That mantle has never left you. It's just increasing. The anointing of wealth is increasing in your life. It's increasing more and more in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you, Mariska. Lord loves you much. Praise God. Now, if you are seated here this, uh, this morning, and you know there's an area in your life that's not functioning as it should, I want to say this to you today. The Lord is freeing up His people that are caught in cycles Repetitive, repetitive cycles of destruction. If there's something the Lord is taking head on today, is repetitive cycles of destruction. And you know what? Some of the most precious hearts are caught in those repetitive cycles of destructions. Hearts that want to serve God. Hearts that wants to be holy and pure, but they are caught in some form of addiction. A cycle that brings destruction. And because of that, things are not functioning well in your life. I want to say this to you. Today, God is not going to let you get away with things you got away with three years ago. His heavy hands will be on you so that you can turn and get healed and delivered so that you can move forward. If you are seated here this morning and something in your life is not functioning well, that needs a touch from God, or you need to get unstuck and move away from a repetitive cycle of destruction. I want you just to stand to your feet. I want to pray for you. Just stand to your feet, wherever you are. You don't need to come forward. You just stand to your feet. God is showing this to me, so it means that God is wanting to, to deliver you. God is wanting to, to set free. Okay, so now wherever you, where you are standing, you are going to experience God's touch. You are going to experience the presence of God right where you are. Be ready for this. Close your eyes. Lift your hands to Jesus. He's here. I also, God says to me, I'm also bringing order into my people's spirits. I'm also bringing order. So here's the presence already. It's flowing already. It's starting to flow. So just be, just be sensitive to what God is doing now. But this is what the Lord is doing. He's delivering. He's aligning your heart with His heart. And He's stopping any vicious cycle, any cycle of destruction in His people's lives. So as I'm going to be praying now, releasing the anointing, it's going to come on you. There's already people here, you're feeling God's, you're already experiencing it, ta tangibly, tangibly. It's there, it's God's already moving. Jesus is moving between the benches. So Father God, 
I thank you for the privilege I have to pray for your people. Any area, Father God, that's not functioning well in their lives, which should function according to what you've designed them to do on this earth, I ask you that you'll breathe your life over that area in their lives now, in the name of Jesus Christ. There it is. I thank you for prayer lives that is growing in intensity. I thank you, Father God, that where they feel they are praying and hitting a wall or a ceiling, that that ceiling and limitation is being taken away right now in Jesus' mighty name. And now I come against every onslaught of the enemy that has tried to lock your people in to a cycle of destruction where this thing is repeating itself year after year. I come against this evil work and I break it now over your life in the name of Jesus. Be free. And Father, I thank you now that each person under the sound of my voice that is standing before you is experiencing a fresh breath from your throne room and a fresh anointing upon their lives and they will walk out of here in the abiding anointing, experiencing your nudges, experiencing the pull of your spirit, experiencing your voice and experiencing a higher level of intimacy. I release this now over your people. And I thank you, Father God, that they have a higher degree of expectancy in this time and in this hour on the face of this earth. I release this now. I thank you for ministries that will take off like never before. I thank you, Father God, for families that will walk closer to each other than ever before. I thank you, Father God, for marriages that will experience a higher degree of romance than ever before. I thank you, Father God, for your life that is being infused into your people's hearts and into your people's minds right now. Oh, Father God, that they will experience heaven in their inward being as you are revealing your secrets for their lives like never before in this time and in this hour. I pray now for your people, Father God, as they engage in the rhythm of, the, of your hearts. Oh, Father God, that they will see, they will experience, and they will uh, flow with everything that heaven has for their lives in this time and in this hour, in the mighty name, there's the presence now coming over you, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, in Jesus' name. There it is. God's Spirit is flowing. God's Spirit is flowing. God's Spirit is flowing. Thank you, Jesus. And I release the mantle, O oh Father God, of providence over each person, The mantle, Father God, of freedom and peace. That they will walk on the face of this earth knowing with full confidence that God is for me. And if God is for me, who can be against me? I release this over your people's lives. And we give you all glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Quickly there, Vanessa. Stand up, please. What, what you are, what, what you, what's happening in your life today, the change and the shifts, and also even the much discomfort and a, a bit of confusion going with all of this, um, it's been orchestrated by the Spirit of God, okay? I see that you are going to sell your house, and it's going to be for a good price, Okay? Not the price that you've set, not at a loss. Okay? Listen, not at a loss. God is shifting you. God is moving you. God is not wanting uh, wanting distance between you and your husband. Okay? And he is going to make a way for you. All right? The opportunities will arise. It's not God's plan for you to be away from your husband. Okay? 
it's okay for a, a small period, okay? But it's not okay for a long period. It's not God's design, okay? So the Lord is going to prosper where you are. He prosper you where He's sending you to. And He's going to take care of school. He's going to take care of all of that. Um, what I do see is you're, you, you, you can get set in your ways, okay? That's tough to break out of your ways, okay? I see that if you've got your habits and you've got your, <laughs> oh my word, it needs a, like a, I need a, a caterpillar to get out of there. What do you mean, a leichraf? A greater. What is it, a great Bulldozer. You need a bulldozer to get you unlocked and lifted up and move you to another place. Okay, that's exactly actually what. <laughs> Listen, Vanessa, you can trust God. God is just telling me, you can just trust Him now. Okay? Just flow with Him. Don't try and reason everything out. Just stay calm. He's moving you. Okay? It's going to happen automatically. It's going to happen swiftly. And it's going to happen. Oh, it's going to be okay. Thank you. So look at the moving companies, trucks and stuff. Prepare yourself because it's not going to be long. Okay? I see a green truck. Probably started. <laughs> <laughs> I see a green truck. God's moving you. Yes. Thank you. It's going to go well. And it's going to, it's going to orchestrate everything. Okay? Thank you. you love Jesus? Yes. Love you much? It's been great spending time with you. I love this church. But just quickly, the, the middle lady there. Um, What's your name? Elmerie. Ken je die heren? Ja. Hoe lang ken je hem al? My leven lang. Je hele leven lang. Waarom is twee op hierdie oomlik? Baie goeie kies. Ja. Baie goeie kies, nee. Ja. Hy dinge met jou gebeur hierdie laaste tyd wat jou baie verwar het die in mekaar gemaakt het, en die Heere wil nou klarigheid en helderheid na jou verstand toe bring. Is dit reg? Ok. Kan jy gauw voor en toekom hier so, asjeblief? Kan ek gauw hier voor vir jou bid? Jy is so ver van my af. Ek kan jy nie mooi sien nie. Hoe oud is jy, Elmerie? 28. Huh? 28. 28. Ja. So. Was jy getrouwd? Mm-mm. Kom goeie, sta nie so. Weet jy dat die duivel jou wil doodmaak? Weet jy dat die duivel jou wil doodmaak? Hy wil jou doodmaak. Hy is van plan om jou dood te maak. Want ons weet die duivel kom te slag te sê en te verboes, maar hy het plan om jou letterlik uit te haal. Sikkel jy met depressie? Het jy selfmoordgedagtes gehad? Ok. So, die duivel het die wind uit jou seil uitgevat, hy het jou depressief gemaakt, hy het jou in een gat ingetrek, Jesus kom vir ons leven en leven in oorvloed te gee. Daar is dinge wat jy nie meer verstaan nie, daar is dinge wat jy voel die Heer het jou gedrop. Die Heer het jou nie gedrop nie. Luister, die Heer het jou nie gedrop nie. Die Heer is lief vir jou. En die Heer het een plan met jou leven. Dit is alles leens. Die duivel is die vader van leens. En vandag kom ek tegen die geest, as die geest van depressie op jou. En die Heere gaan jou vandag verlos. Is jy gereed daarvoor? Ken jy vir Jesus? Ken jy? Jy mal ontmoet as jy persoonlijke God en salafmaker. He? Ok. Is daar iemand in jou leven wat jy nie kan vergewe nie? Jouself? Is een goeie plek om te begin. Iemand wat jy baie seer gemaakt het. Denk jy aan iemand? Ok, is jy bereid om te vergewe? Ok, steek op jy handen na jy rit. Vat net af. Daar is hy. Sê vader, ek vergewe. Elke persoon wat my leed aan gedoen het. Ek spreek hulle vry. En vandag gee ek my leven op niet aan u. Kom nou in my hart. En raak my aan. Daar is hy, daar is die teenwoordigheid van die heren. Daar is hy, daar is hy. Ek bestraf elke bose gees 
wat jou wil vernietig, wat jou leven wil steel. En ek dank je papa vir nieuwe leven in die dochter, nou, in die naam, daar sê, daar sê, daar sê, daar sê, in die naam, oe, van Jesus. Daar sê, daar sê, oe, God's spirit is all over. Satan comes to kill, steal and destroy. Jesus comes to give us life in abundance. Your life will never be the same again. God's intervened in your life. And he's interfering in your life too. Uninvitedly. Because you've got such a beautiful heart and you've got so much to give. But the devil has tried to hide you. He's tried to bury you. And he's even tried to kill you. Especially the last few months. God's come to you and he's called you out because he's got a plan with you. Even the people that you are meeting now that's new in your life, they have been sent by God to come and get you out of the clutches of the enemy. God has sent his angels as people to come and talk to you. Is that true? All new people, new circles, your old circles are dying out. God doesn't want you to be there anymore. You've been on territories that's not been the territory that God has called you to walk on. And God says, it's done. It's over. Okay? Praat ek waar? Baie waar. So you can't go and walk on those territories and think you're not going to be, you think you're not going to be burnt. You're going to get harmed. God doesn't want you there. God's grace has saved you, pulled you out of a place of destruction into the light again. Okay? Now you stay in the light. Okay? Have you a drink here? Yes. see in your word. Thank you. Okay. Praise the Lord. Where is Pastor Gerrit? <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Gerrit. Love you all. You must have a wonderful Sunday. I'm flying back to France this evening. And then see you all on awakening. Oh, well, all. Sorry. Some people on awakening. I see you. I see the people here from awakening and Margie and Mariska and everyone. So, uh, I saw many people from far away that came through this morning from Woodbank. <laughs> but uh, love you all and uh, see you soon again. And I love this ministry. I love your pastor, Pastor Gerrit and Lene. And uh, I'm very excited to see what the Lord is doing here. Um, God is shaping this ministry for him. Because you've got a heart that wants to serve God. And you love God deeply. And I'm honored to know you. And uh, I want to say that uh, I'm a f- big friend of this ministry. And uh, I want to see you succeed in every way. Okay? God bless you. Love you much. Ciao, ciao.